What is the law of total probability, or the total probability rule? That's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. This is a viewer requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave your requests down in the comments. We'll start off by looking at an abstract example, and then we'll look at a concrete example of the law of total probability. Let's suppose this big black box is our sample space, and suppose there are three events that partition this sample space. Let's say the events are B1, B2, and B3. These three events partitioning the sample space means that they are disjoint, so no two events can happen at the same time, and all together, these three events make up the whole sample space. This is the sort of situation where we can use the law of total probability. We know that any event in this sample space, let's call this event A for example, it is made up entirely of parts that are in B1, parts that are in B2, and parts that are in B3. More formally, we can write that A is equal to A intersect B1, union A intersect B2, union A intersect B3. If we put together all the pieces of A that are in B1, B2, and B3, we get all of A. And that's what this equation is saying. Then, basically, by applying the sum rule of probability to this equation, we get the law of total probability. And here that is. The law of total probability tells us that the probability of A is equal to the probability that A and B1 occur, plus the probability that A and B2 occur, plus the probability that A and B3 occur. Because if A occurs, then we know that either B1 also occurred, or B2 also occurred, or B3 also occurred. So when we add up the probabilities of all of these intersections, we get the total probability of A, hence the name Law of Total Probability. And we also know that we're not double counting any of the probability, because again, the events B1, B2, and B3 are disjoint, or mutually exclusive. This is an example of the law of total probability, where our sample space is partitioned into three sets. But the law also applies when our sample space is partitioned into any countable number of sets. So it also works with a partition into 10 sets, or 20 sets, or 100 sets, all the way up to a countably infinite number of sets. A very important thing to point out is that sometimes we really don't know the probability of the intersection of two events. But we can often figure it out using conditional probabilities. So when we actually use the law of total probability, it's very often the case that we'll be using this formula for the probability of the intersection of two events. If you're familiar with conditional probability, this should look familiar. The probability of A intersect B is equal to the probability of A, given that B has occurred, multiplied by the probability of B. And knowing that this is true, we can rewrite this equation as this equation that uses conditional probabilities to calculate the probabilities of intersections. Alright, with all of that said, let's move on to our actual example. So in this situation, we've got three bags, bag A, bag B, and bag C. And they each have a different number of red balls and green balls. Here's the question we want to answer about this situation. A ball is randomly selected from a random bag. What's the probability that the ball is red? This, of course, seems like it could be a pretty complicated problem, because the probability of selecting a red ball depends on the bag that is chosen, but we don't know what bag is chosen. But this problem is no match for the law of total probability. Our sample space has been partitioned into three sets. What are those sets? Well, we're either going to select a ball from bag A, bag B, or bag C. So A, B, and C are the three events that partition our sample space. And let's say that R is the event that the ball is red. Then, using the law of total probability, what's the probability of R, the probability that the ball is red? Well, it's equal to the probability that the ball is from the first bag and the ball is red, plus the probability that the ball is from the second bag and the ball is red, 
plus the probability that the ball is from the third bag and the ball is red, because the ball has to come from one of these three bags. So if we add up these three probabilities, we will get the total probability that the ball is red. But what is the probability that the chosen ball is red and from bag A? Well, that's not super obvious, but what if we rewrite this as a conditional probability? And which event should we take as the given condition, the ball being red or the bag being A? Since in our equation it's the bag that's changing in each probability, we want to take the particular bag as the given condition. So we'll replace the probability of A intersect R with the probability of R given A multiplied by the probability of A. And we'll do a similar thing with these other two probabilities. The probability of B intersect R becomes the probability of R given B multiplied by the probability of B. The probability of C and R becomes the probability of R given C multiplied by the probability of C. Again, notice that since it was the bags changing in each probability, it's the particular bag that we take as given. And now this might not look it, but this is a lot easier. What's the probability that we get a red ball given that the selected bag is A? Well, there's five balls in A and there's two red balls. So that probability is two fifths. So we'll replace this probability with two fifths. What's the probability of selecting bag A? Well, we're randomly selecting one bag from three. So the probability that the bag we select is A is one third. The same is true for the probability of selecting either of the other two bags. There's a one-third probability of selecting B, and there is a one-third probability of selecting C. What's the probability that we select a red ball given that bag B is selected? Well, there are three red balls in bag B and five balls total, so that probability is three-fifths. What's the probability of selecting a red ball given that bag C is selected? C has one red ball of five balls total, so that probability is one-fifth. And then here we go, we've just got to do a little bit of fraction multiplication, two-fifth times one-third. What's that? That is two-fifteenths. Three-fifths times one-third. What's that? That is three-fifteenths. And then one-fifth times one-third. What's that? That is one-fifteenth. And then adding these three numbers up, we get that the probability of selecting a red ball is 6 fifteenths. And that, my friends, is how we use the law of total probability. And we won't always have to use conditional probabilities when we apply this law, but it is very often useful. I'll also point out that from the start of the problem, we could have noticed that there are 15 equally likely possibilities. And there are six possibilities where we select a red ball. And so we could quickly come to the conclusion that the probability of selecting a red ball is six over 15. But it's not always gonna be that easy. The law of total probability is definitely very important. But this is a nice, easy example to introduce it. And here is the law of total probability in more general terms. If we have a finite or countably infinite partition of a sample space into sets B1, B2, B3, and so on, and A is an event in the same sample space, then the probability of A can be found by summing the probability of the intersection of A with each of those sets B1, B2, B3, and so on. And of course, we can also replace that probability of an intersection with a conditional probability multiplied by the probability of the given condition. And remember, this sum notation just means to add this up for every value of i. And now here's a practice exercise to try on your own. Use the law of total probability to solve this problem. In a class, 40% of students are male and 60% are female. 60% of the males are taller than six feet and 10% of the females are taller than six feet. What percent of the class is shorter than six feet? 
it's a pretty easy problem, just break out that law of total probability. Let me know how it goes down in the comments, and I'll leave the solution in the description. So I hope this video helped you understand what the law of total probability is. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. I'm not made.